What's going on? Welcome back. And we are back at it today. I told you this was coming. We are installing that component piece that Wireware Miami sent us. Little light, please. Bah. So yes, today we are installing the kit that Wireware Miami sent us. I didn't let you know what it was in the last video. I didn't let you know what it was on Instagram, but today I'm gonna let you know what it is. So let's get into it. Here it is right here, black box. Did you know that the black box that they talk about on airplanes is not black? It's literally orange as hell. Orange is eco lawn equipment. So just a quick uh, Snapple top fact maybe. So let's get back into it. Right here, boom, black box. Awesome, super duper wireware Miami sticker. That should be on the box. I'm just gonna recommend that. Put it to the side. What do we have here? You should know what it looks like. Yes, it looks like what it is. Boom, oh, push start. Yes, we are installing push start on the TIG. Now let's get this tag uncovered and then go into some of the things that I think we're gonna need right off the back to install this. And of course we might have to add some tools along the way, but that shit happens. And let's get to installing this kit, see if it actually works, see how easy to install. And I'm gonna give you some tips. Roll the intro. There are a couple of things right off the bat that I don't want you to do that we're going to do different here from other videos that I have seen. Okay, so one, we're not going to do this. All right, we're not going to be pushing our collar to the side because we're not going to remove the entire key cylinder. I think that is probably a mistake that is overlooked in a couple of these videos. And a lot of times, if you noticed in that clip, it was a real light push. Um, well, in that clip, you saw the push in the collar scooter to the side, and that's because he removed the entire key cylinder or the entire key assembly there. So then the collar had nothing to mount to. So we're not going to do that. I'm going to show you how we're going to work around that. Another thing is we're going to eliminate the steering wheel lock, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so there's a couple of different things that we're going to do. Explain why. We'll show you in the video how I'm going to do them and how I'm gonna get around that so you can still mount your push start button in the keyhole area. And we're gonna measure that out and show you why that's possible. Now let's get into some of these tools that we're gonna use that I have selected thus far, cause we might need more. All right, so, so far we've got a Rayobi drill right there. We're gonna need that. Not sure about the drill bit size. We'll get into that as we get into the project. Good Milwaukee 3.8 electric ratchet. Love it. I have a cobalt. I'm going to do a video comparing these two on which one you should probably buy. Of course, the old faithful number two and quarter inch flathead. Then we have a set of crimpers, a good set of strippers that I love these clients and a set of needle nose, angle needle nose for various reasons and a set of picks. Definitely need a good set of picks. Cheap set of picks you can get by with, but beware they might break a bend. Now, as we move over here, we see the things that we have in the wireware kit. All right, we have what I think is a sensor or what I would call a transponder type situation. We do have the push start button. We have the module, which is the brains of the operation. We have our harness that is gonna be used to adapt the kit to the car. And I usually like putting these smaller parts in something like this so I don't lose them. This wire right here, I'm pretty sure is going to the brake line. And this, these terminals in here, I'm pretty sure are gonna be used to attach this wire to the brake line. As you see on here, this is an unfinished end. I'm pretty sure we're gonna go ahead and lock that in, crimp this to that, and there we go. So that those assemblies go together. I like to keep those things with that. So with that being said, now it is time to actually get in here. I'm thinking that this install probably may take about two hours, depending on some of the other headaches that I might run into. You have to remember there are quite a few things installed in this car. You only have so much room. And then eventually you have to get into a situation where, you know what, I got to pull all of this shit and probably rewire it. So if you can methodically think things out as you start installing things, it probably will help you in the long run. But so many of us don't, including me. All right, let's get into it. Oh, I forgot one thing. You're going to need your key. You need your key. Definitely need your key. I mean, if you not that you, I would think that you don't think that you need it, but you do need it still for this. Excuse the mess down here. Of course, I keep a carpet on top of there. Thought I was dirty. Well, first thing we're gonna do is move this under panel right here. Now there are two screws, one on this side right down here and another right here on this side. So we'll pop those Phillips head screws out and then we'll pull this panel. 
you do have your battery connected, make sure you disconnect it. These pieces are getting harder to find, so if you break this shit, you'll be mad at yourself. Wow, there we go. Now we just disconnect the top bottom. Watch out, those screws will fall out. Time it takes them a little bit. And then we'll take this side off, taking the top off right there. Pull your adjustment down, your adjustment lever for your column down and pull that out just like that. And put this to the side on the bench. Lift that up, lock it back into place. Take these screws, just go ahead and just a couple of threads, put them back in. Now we are going to remove this plate right here so we can get to these wires on this side and access the harness. You just heard the steering wheel lock. So we're gonna fix that issue. And then we're also going to look at this section right here. Wanna be very careful with this because, oh, you can't see it because the damn steering wheel's in the way. My bad. We wanna be very careful with this because we may need it again. And if we are not careful, we may find ourselves in a situation to have to buy a completely new one and I don't wanna get involved in that. And this situation over here is something that might completely end up coming off. So we wanna make sure that we detach the harness correctly and we wanna to try to keep things together, not cutting or barbarically ruining things because we might need them again. So let's get into removing this so we can get to the underside of this dash. All right, so now we got our Milwaukee 10, Milwaukee ratchet with the 10 millimeter socket on it, which I'm pretty sure, and there it goes. This should come right off there it is same practice i'm going to put these bolts back in their place and more than likely we'll end up using one of these as the ground so try to think about which one you want to use clean that surface area when we get to it what you'll see and we'll use one of those as ground now let's see what we're looking for here and i'm looking for two different colors and i may need to get a light so you'll see that if you follow this one goes right here and then you have another one wire that comes off of here right here and if you trace this one around it goes right in there all right so those two brown plugs are going to be replaced all right that one and this one with these two these two will plug into those other areas that's what we're doing so let's get to doing that. No, actually, let's get to unplugging that first, removing that harness, and then doing that. There we go. So that one comes out. There it is. And there it is. All right. So there go these two. Just remember where those things came out of. Shouldn't be too hard. They're obviously blank spots. So we got that out. Now we'll go ahead and uh, unmingle this from some of this other stuff. And then it comes up here and we'll pull this section out of here and get that harness out of there. I don't know if you can hear the horns, but evidently they're doing some type of testing. Today is pretty damn clear unless there's some phantom tornado about to come and wipe this shit out. I'd be surprised. So ignore that. Which it is on this side, but that too also may not matter since we're going to be pulling that ignition side out. So just take this out. Be very careful, like I said, because we may need to reuse this. We may have to install this shit again if it doesn't work properly, of course. So never just like screw everything up trying to uninstall it. Like be very careful not to try to break anything because you may have to put it back in. So we got this side out. And now we have this attached to this. So let me pull you on this side. All right, once we get that screw, and yeah, I can see it got pretty loose right there. Uh, I wanna locate that screw, there it is. Keep those all together. And bam, this assembly comes off, all right? So I don't even need to remove anything else right now. 
I have this removed, which should be good enough. And I can take this off, put this to the side, and then I'll test and see if I put this back in place, will it give me enough clearance room? And it doesn't really look like it will. Yeah, it looks like I should have enough clearance room, but I'll probably just take this off and disconnect it. I don't think we'll need it so we can disconnect it. And then if we do need it and the car doesn't start, we can reconnect it. But let's go ahead and get rid of this stuff and um, get ready to uninstall the rest of it. Let's look at this. So there you go. You can see we got that. You can tell this came out of OEM setup. The black marks on there indication, you know, nobody else in the manufacturer is not going to try to duplicate that black mark. So Anthony used OEM connectors. And then as you see, this connector too, matching up with that one. So let's put that to the side. Get rid of that. I'm just going to eyeball it because I know if I put these tabs in, it's pretty much going to cover up this. And that's all I'm gonna do. So actually, yeah, I have more than enough room. I may have not even needed to pull that entire system out of there, uh, but technically, yeah, because it comes off with the harness. So we're just gonna test fit just to be sure. Nothing wrong with test fitting, be comfortable with that. And yeah, so without all that stuff in there, we have enough clearance, especially for our wiring to go around the cylinder and make it in there. So we're good. So we do not need to remove this entire key cylinder. So you will need to use a chisel and hammer. Just give them a few light taps to get them to turn. That saves us some steps, saves us some time, and saves us uh, some headache if all of this shit doesn't work. And we have to reinstall our OEM harness for key regular startup. We're not gonna be using this key. So what we don't want is the steering wheel still locking on us. So we're gonna need to drill out this section so that the pin and the spring come out of here so the steering wheel doesn't lock. That's what we're gonna do next. Right there to get this steering wheel to stop locking. Like I said, kick gloves with this section. is the spring is coming out and there it is the spring right there so there's our spring see if our steering wheel locks and there you go the steering wheel no longer locks all right there it is simple as that so now we're going to get this get this harness installed in the car plug these into the slots where the factory harness was uninstalled and then this actually will go to the box and then, then we'll find a ground location for this. All right, so let's get this in here. And push it right there and it clicked. So that is in. Now this one will go over here on this side where the other one came out and just kind of let the wires go where they kind of naturally feel where they're not binded up, not a lot of tension on there. And boom, that one clicked in. So I'll get my fingers up here just to squeeze and make sure that one's in and it is. And then this ground wire, I said I'm going to go ahead and use this one. So I'm going to go ahead and put some sandpaper on here and make sure we got a good spot. And I'm going to secure that down because what we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to pretty much get all of this stuff in here soft installed. And what I mean by soft installed, I'm going to get it up here. It's pretty much going to be hanging. Uh, nothing's going to be secured to the clamshell. Nothing's going to be zip tied. I want to be sure that when I do connect power, that this kit actually works, that it actually starts the car however I have to do it before I go securing everything like we're all golden and then we realize we have an issue and have to take all that shit back out. That's a pain in the ass. If you've done plenty of installs, you should know that by now. Soft install first. Then once everything works, line it up how you want to, nice and pretty. Next thing we got to do is find the brake switch and come off of the green wire. But first, let's go ahead and get the wire prepared because it does need some assembly. What I have here right now is the wire, the terminal, the crimp, a lighter, some heat shrink, which I think is too big for that. So we're going to get some smaller heat shrink. I'm pretty sure I got a bunch of that around here and these crimpers. So let me get the smaller heat shrink. 
always get you a heat shrink kit. Comes in handy. I say, yep, that one will work. If not, we'll pull that one out just in case. I'm not going to take any length off of this. I want as much length as I can get. I can always kind of fold it up. We're only worried about this unfinished end, not this end. This will probably go, this will go into the box. Uh, I like to size my terminal up right there. That's about how much I want to take off about right in here. Well, actually, let's go right there. Strip that, being sure not to cut any of the wire strands if you can help it. Now, we will take the heat shrink and measure this up. I only want about that much. So, let's cut about that much off. And actually, this heat shrink wasn't too big. We actually can use that because we need to come over this. I want to come over that, so let me cut this instead. Right there. Slide the heat shrink right over this first because if you do everything first you won't get that heat shriek on i've done it several times that's how i know now what we'll do is go ahead and slide our wire in there and there it stopped now we get our crimpers right here and start crimping down i like to go a little bit from the base and then to the top and i could tell i crimped that i saw the wire pretty much singed to the right which means it's got pressure on it if you want it, you can get a multimeter and test this uh, doing a continuity check from one end to one end to make sure you do have connection, which might not be a bad idea. With this baby right here, it is set on tone. All I am looking for is to hear a beep letting me know that I do have an established connection. It doesn't matter if it's not polarity sensitive. So just put one of the points in there. And then take your other point of your harness where the wire is connected and come in from this side if you can. You might not be able to get a reading in there because it's pretty deep in there. So you probably need a pin out. But you can come from the back. You got enough space there. And there we go. Tone. So that means we do have connection from one end to the other. All right. So the terminal is on securely. You could imagine if you put this together and you didn't have connection and you installed the kit, you may think something else is wrong because in your brain, you think this is so simple that you couldn't screw it up, but you actually can. So just do that to eliminate that. Then we'll feed this heat shrink right over this. Feed that right over that. Really don't need to go too far. Just kind of want to cover that in. And I like a nice tight fit like that. That is actually pretty damn cool. I'm loving that because now we'll put the lighter on here heat gun if you have it if you don't good lighter works put the lighter on here come from this side walk our way up walk our way up and voila that's good that's good right there all right always a good practice boom cover that up there you go now that we have assembled this brake switch wire uh we will find the actual brake switch wire that comes off the brake harness in there crimp this down and basically what's going to happen is that's going to bite through the covering of the wire that's what's supposed to happen i dropped it i'll pick it up later and again what we're going to do i'm going to cut this multimeter off what we're going to do is once we get that on because it's to me that's not a direct connection i almost want to peel back some of the brake switch wire or sheathing or burn some of it off and actually take this wire and i wanted to solder it in but i'm not going to do that i'm going to trust this for a second if something ever goes wrong i'm definitely going to check that first but what we're going to do is put that all together and before we plug this into the box run another continuity check to make sure that we do have connection all right all right so the brake switch wire and connector are buried behind a massive or i'll say massive but it's just a big diameter cluster of wires and that is let's see if i can show you right behind here and it also has a loom on it with electrical tape so what i'm going to do off camera and then i'll just show you the afterwards i'm going to take this razor blade slit the electrical tape see if i can pull that wire out some and then we'll get that crimp in there it's a pretty tight fit so i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get footage of that but i can show you after i finish connecting so you know the general location and you know pretty much the basic idea of what's going on oh my gosh this brake switch location on the integra is fucking hell it's hell
It's in a very awkward, tight ass place. The damn push clip to dislodge the damn pin out is on the top side, which has no room for these hands. But I'm gonna get it done, but damn it, just beware. I don't, why, nobody's talking about this. They don't wanna tell you the trouble they ran into with this shit, but I'm telling you, it's a pain in the ass. Gonna get it done though. All right, so listen, there are like three green wires up here. All right, they say connect to a green wire. All right, I call Anthony, and of course, being the wiring guru he is, basically process of elimination, we need to connect to the wire that will pass power when the brake is pushed down, which means the circuit's closed. So I'm gonna have to put a multimeter up there and press the brake and find the one that does that because we don't want a constant for a couple of reasons. Just believe me, don't hook it up to a constant power. Don't do it. Find the right wire. This is a pain in the ass. This portion is a pain in the ass. I imagine once this is done, everything will start going back smoothly, but this one's a pain in the ass. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. Uh, so right now I've, I've banged my door like several times. I have this hooked up to the ground where we are hooking the actual system ground to, which it should work. So if we get a reading on here of probably like anywhere between 12 to 14 volts, Right now it's zero. If we connect to a wire and this automatically picks up, that lets you know it's a constant power. We want nothing on there. I wanna press the brake pedal and then I want to get at least 12 to 14 volts. So let's see if I can get that done to get into the back of the actual uh, wiring harness clip so I don't have to bite into the wire right now. So all you guys are looking for is power if I can find it. So let's get let's get her done. I'm gonna try the first one. It is green striped with white. Right now I see nothing. I'm gonna push this brake pedal. Thank God on the first go. And, and there we go. 12 volts pretty much, all right? 11.8, whatever the case is. That's our, right there, that's our power source. When the brake pedal's pushed down, we get voltage. When it's let go, it's not good. First time to charm. I'm glad this shit happened. Let's get this rolling. I'm so ready to get this to testing phase. Now I gotta get my medium to large hands up in there to connect that, this piece uh, right here. All right, I'm done trying to finagle this bullshit. It's too tight under there. I got all OEM loom besides for a few things that have been customized. At this point in time, you could spend an umpteen amount of time trying to hair finagle this and break something else, which I had a wire come loose and I have to find out where that wire goes. So I'm actually gonna have to go back in footage to be sure where what slot it went to because it's an aftermarket application. But I'm about to just drop the steering column, literally, to get me space in there because I do not have space enough to work, then make sure that the lines are secure in all this i just don't so i really need this section out of the way so i can get in there and either pull the connector off and drop it down or get both hands in there when laying down after i drop this column down so that's what i'm about to do i'm going to drop this damn column down there it is the column is dropped now i actually have space to work in here i've disconnected that harness now I'm going to go ahead and plug into the wire that we found out, which was the one with the solid white stripe on it, not the ones with the green, solid green with gray dots on it. Now I have enough area to at least get in there with a good one hand, maybe even two, and manipulate this so I can put this crimp on or this splice on, terminal on, and then get this up. All of this for a damn brake wire. It is a pain in the butt. This is the way, easiest way I found to do it. Had I done this probably a half hour ago, I'd be done with it. So just be careful not to move your steering column around too much that it rotates so you can put it back up in position. And uh, you could do it with one person. I did it. Now I'm gonna move on so we can move on. Clip installed onto the wire that gives us power when we press the brake. Now I have the multimeter set up and what I want to do is take this lead, put it into the connector side, not the back side. I want to go through the connector and then press the brake. No, actually I don't need to press the brake. I just want to go through the connector and make sure I have continuity 
to the end of here that's going to plug into the box to let the box know that we have power established to turn the car on so that's what i'm about to do right now now there we go so we do have connection through the harness this part was quite a pain in the ass as you can see uh i i'm saying like you some of you all may not have all of this stuff in there like me maybe you might have different uh spacing maybe you might have an eg maybe it might be different for the eg but right now this is what i'm running into with the integra so now that we've gotten past that pretty much right now i anticipate that's going to be the roughest patch i'm going to get this column go ahead and tighten it and tighten that back up and then right now at this point we'd be ready to go ahead and soft install the box see if this push button actually works without being installed and if we do actually get the car to start or turn over then we know we're in the right direction if it starts we definitely know we're in the right direction so that's what we're about to do right now go ahead and make sure when we press the brake that we actually get the vultures through here that's what we're looking for and we're not getting it i have it set for 20 volts um so when we press the brake there we go we're getting it right there um yeah the clutch pedal is not the brake pedal so yeah there we go brake switch activated 12 volts let it go so we're still good all right so getting ready to wire up the box there are no indicators on the box to tell you what to plug into so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass my research along to you i'm going to put this diagram up all right and i'm going to put it up after i show you so right here goes the antenna main harness which is a no-brainer and then the push start so i'm gonna put this diagram up you can go back to it pause it so you can see what's going on and where these things go all right so let's get ready to plug this box up button goes on this side with the three prongs uh, that's another way to tell what's what the braking system more than likely will go on this side because we already saw that the antenna goes on this side so power coming in for the braking system should go here right there so you can see that and then the main part of the harness goes right here and i want to make sure that's plugged in right and it is so now our box is plugged up our button is right here so technically when we go ahead and apply power we should get the button to light up see if the passing of the key activates the antenna and then actually try to bump start the car um, probably just going to have to hold this in my hand it's going to be very awkward but that's the way we'll get it done so let's pull this light out of here get some power in here and see how this goes unravel this a little bit bring the bring the push button up here uh, I did get a little beeping action don't know what that was and bring my foot around very carefully matter of fact okay so right there we already brought the key close to the transponder and got a reaction so we have to foot on the brake all right so let me do this let me put this key right here this is awkward all right this is awkward as hell uh, let me unravel some of this crap all right so i want to put my other foot put the push start right there so you all can see it i want to put my other foot through here so i can activate the clutch make sure i don't push these cables out and all right so at this point in time i should be ready to start if i pass this through we should see something nothing so we click this there's the light to start button and it's already trying to crank up then let's hit it again and then we'll hit it again nothing so we got nothing right now so what i'm thinking is we have a issue with the mobilizer not recognizing the key because no keys in there so the one way that i can try that out and see if it's true is if i put the key in there will that work i don't know so we could try it again but by now i know my car would have crossed up so i'm not sure what's going on so let's try this again 
Boom. And no start, all right? So we got a field start right there. I ran into an issue. Everything cuts on, the tag works, the push button start lights up, the radio lights up, the ECU is not flashing, it's not coming on. So I'm not even getting any of that coming power coming through the ECU. So the fact that the radio is cutting on means ACC is coming through. I was a little hesitant, me and Anthony just got off of the, the video chat. So we were kind of hooking this up thinking the immobilizer was used, but since I have a, a Honda S, S3 or V3, you know what I'm saying, S300 V3, I don't even think the immobilizer is a thing now. So with that being said, I'm finna look for the ECU fuse and see if maybe the ECU fuse may have popped for some reason, which would be odd, but possible. So you wanna start the lowest part of resolution first. So I'm gonna look for that. My fuse box is tucked, so I have to find it and go from there. While eating a nice chicken, strawberry, apple vinaigrette salad with leafy spinach, I eat healthy. And this is an exact reason why you don't go gorilla fucking shit up when you're trying to put something new in. You always want to preserve the OEM shit as much as possible. Like I said, we went to start the car. I went to start the car, called in after the car didn't start, trying to figure out why it wasn't starting. And uh, came back out here after I calmed down, got some food in my system, got some water. Uh, put the OEM stuff back in, immediately relay kicked on, and the car OE, uh, ECU came on. This is what we found after going through this, all right? So if you look at this harness from the kit, you see that bottom one is in the middle splitting the top two. If you look at the same type of harness from the OEM, you'll see that bottom wire is to the left, that one that would have been splitting the top two, is down toward the bottom so now the idea the plan is to now go and find the diagram for what these are because ant labeled these like the electronic technician he is pin this the same as this and technically i say because i don't know what other gremlins are lying in this 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 troll bridge everything should work so that's what i'm about to do i'm about to look up online see what that pin out that harness is and then repin the kit to match and duplicate that. All right. All right, so went ahead, repin the harness on the kit, looked up a diagram for ignition harness for this year model, found out the diagram really wasn't even a diagram, it was a color code. And based off that, since all the OEM pin outs were in the original place, then I just went and duplicated that, unpinned the um, kit harness and repinned it. So now, we're finna actually see if this is gonna work. One indication is gonna be if we get power to the ECU. So let's go ahead and carefully get in here. Nothing secure. I went ahead and put the ring up here out of place. I uh, got the push start button right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and step on the brake. Step down on the clutch. Go ahead and scan. Push the button. ECU did turn though. So now, let's see what happens this time. Hold it down. <laughs> now, let's see if I let off the brake. Will it stay on? Let's see. Oh, we're in the game. We're in the game. There we go. So now that we have that actually started up, Figured out the issue, so if, let me turn this off. Oh good, it turned off too. So if you have that issue where you go and try to push start and nothing happens, the starter just turns, you definitely need to listen to hear if you, if you hear your gas fuel pump. And if you see your, now that's the wonderful thing. If I didn't have that kick panel where I customized it so I could see my Honda at ECU, I would have never known if the ECU was on or not. I just wouldn't have known. But because I have a see-through see window that I customized, and you can check that video out on the YouTube, I knew that the ECU wasn't on. So it, it helped me further diagnose where our issue was coming from. So that's the fix for that. Now that everything ran, it turned on, it's time to get this cleaned up, put up, look nice, see the final product. That's what I'm about to do.
Yes. So here we got the bottom portion of the clamshell. Uh, I want to install my push start right here. I know a lot of people are putting it in the plastic to the side. I just say it's pointless if you got a kit like this to just have no key at all. I mean, that's the whole point. So I'm going all in. Uh, I think I've removed enough of the OEM ignition to put this in and have enough clearance for my wire on this side not to be pinched. So what you do is you take these tabs, bend them in. I use my thumb to kind of set the placement where I want the bend to take place on my finger. And then uh, I'll just keep bending them a little bit by a little bit until they actually fit through the diameter of this hole line it up the way i want it right there uh push start boom i mean it doesn't have to be perfectly straight now i'm going to take these in here and bend these back over nice and firm i'll go caddy corner so since i did that one i'll come down here to this one boom and you can see how it's pulling up and now i'll do this one and then i'll do this one and it kind of pulls the button in there, all right? So there it goes, push start button is installed in the bottom portion of the clamshell. My wiring is right here. I'm going to test fit it. I'll run it down through here so it's not pinched because the other part of the clamshell top portion will just be right here. So everything back there should be good and I shouldn't run into any issues. So there it is right there installed. Let's get to putting some of the other stuff together. I have my sensor where I want it mounted. I also have the computer where I want it mounted. Now I'm getting ready to tuck all this up, put some zip ties in, um, get all this back up, get this back clean. Then we're going to get to how the clamshell is going to go on and look. So we're going to keep moving and soon we'll be on to a finished product. You will see. Uh, it just takes a little longer than I thought it was, but we're getting there. Getting ready to put this panel back in here. Put that metal panel back in here. That's our ground. We're still using that bolt. So remember that spot. And now we got our ground wire. Do another soft start and see how that works. Now I'm gonna tell you like this. If you notice, I didn't go into where I put my box. I didn't go into where I put my sensor. I don't think any of you should either. It's, that's a security feature, okay? so. You're showing everybody where you're putting your sensor. I'm not saying somebody's gonna have another tag the same as yours, but it's possible. Why make it so easy for them so they know exactly where your sensor locations are in your vehicle? You don't wanna do that. That's part of having this kit, is being able to have like a security checkpoint. If they can't find out where that sensor is, then they're, they're dead in the water right then and there. So that's really what you wanna do. You don't wanna give that up. So I didn't. I suggest you don't. We'll go ahead and get this panel put. I'm gonna wipe that panel down, put some vac cleaner. I'm not putting that shit back up there like that. It's dusty. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead, put the clamshell on, and then go ahead and do a hard start with everything in its spot where it's supposed to be. And then I'll come back and do some vacuum in and we'll do some little B-roll maybe. All right. All right, so let's go over this. As you see here, uh, the clamshell, the reason why in the other video that you saw, and if not, I'll put it up in a little small screen, when he pushed the button, this whole clamshell went over, all right? You don't really want to remove the entire cylinder assembly, okay? You just need to remove portions of it enough to get your button in there to clear and not pinch the wire, and that's good enough. You really want to have a good look when you push that, a nice sturdy look instead of your clamshell just kind of joggling around. That's not going to look good. Uh, but other than that, that's what we got. Now let's go ahead and just get this thing started. Wires up. Uh, got the bottom portion of the clamshell on. I'm going to put the top portion on now. The top portion just clamps into place. Uh, the, only the bottom portion has screws to it. You just want to make sure that you get these uh, bottom retaining clips correct. And that's what you got right there. Boom, bada bing, bada boom. Now you will see me start this thing up using the push button using the push button all right push the clutch in boom there we go start we are good 
Loving it. Loving that. That is how it is done. Now that is gonna look good even at night, along with the ECU. Totally loving that thing. I'm gonna give this thing a little air to get that vibration off. Just a little bit, nothing much. Get it off the ground, son. Yeah, find that vibration now. There we go. So that listen. I am super excited that that is done. A lot longer than I thought it was gonna take. Some mishaps, some things to learn. But I am completely satisfied with the way things look right now. Uh, now I'm just gonna let this car run a little bit, hoping it runs good, starts up, hasn't been started in a while. So I might even take it for a test drive, make sure that that's gonna be okay. And then uh, other than that, we'll go from there. So I appreciate all of you stopping by. Appreciate you supporting the channel. I hope that you tried this yourself. This was a pretty good damn modification. I think it looks good. You still need the key to get into the car, but technically, if you upgrade that section with an alarm system that can give you keyless entry, then you go totally keyless. And how cool is that, right? So, like I said, hit the Instagram, plenty of pictures of the car, subscribe, like, peace.